Hey folks, hacking this and that back again with another, I'll call it a corrective tutorial. Uh, so many of you have been playing around with the Dragino sensors uh, or following my directions uh, and struggling with the downlink capabilities. And I have to correct the uh, instructions I gave in the uh, Configuration 101 video. Um, I had actually come across this wiki article uh, previously and read it, digested it, went, oh, well, I'm not running into that problem, so it must not apply. Well, after spending some time last night with the Dragino engineers, I discovered it does matter. Um, so I will include the link to this wiki because I think there's going to be a lot of important information that we're all going to want to have. This is specifically on notes for using Helium with Dragino products. Um, so what do I want to correct here? The instructions I had given in the past were to use the text value of the um, configuration option. In this case, you know, the TDC, uh, inter time interval for... Um, uh, uplinking and that is incorrect that will not work um, it has to do with the way console converts text to base 64 not realizing that the value is actually hex not text um, so in this example in the the wiki you'll see they have the tdc value of 3C, and that sets a 60 second uh, uplink interval. You'll see the converted base 64 as AQAAPA equals equals, which in and of itself looks innocuous compared to anything else that console does on its own converting text to base 64. The problem is what is actually getting sent to the device is incorrect. So. I'm going to show you what's happening. I have my device hooked up to a debugger and we're uh, terminaled into the sensor. And then I'm going to show you how to get the right payload and send that. So uh, let's start over at console. And here is uh, my test sensor. So. In the past, 0100258 sets a 10 minute uh, uplink interval. I'm gonna turn this to text. I'm gonna put it in the first payload and I am going to queue for download. There we see it queued for download. Now I'm going to pull up putty and we're gonna watch this downlink so this should have expired on me so i should have to put my password in and then at send binary 1122 oh, it helps if i spell send properly at plus send binary equals 1122 so i've forced an uplink we're now going to receive data there is our payload that was received by the device. That does not match the value that we put in there. This is where the problem comes from. So how do we get the right value? The first tool you're gonna want, and I will include links to all of these, is a decimal to hex converter. So let's go to 10 minute interval, and we're gonna convert that, and we're gonna see that that is 0258. Now, the tool that the Dragino's engineer uh, introduced me to last night uh, is this Base64 US. It is natively in Chinese. Uh, Google will convert it to English for you. Um, so we're going to 0112. What was my value there? Uh, oh, right, 258. I know that. 258. Before I go clicking and coding, I need to come down here to the advanced options. In the advanced options, we are going to leave pretty much everything the same, except we're going to change the decode output format to hex. And yes, this is Google being silly. Um, 
you may have to click this a few times if you're working in English and Google Translate, uh, unless you read Chinese, in which case then you have a leg up on me. Um, and then the encoding input format also needs to be defined as hexed. Um, this is the silver bullet. So now when I click encode, there's my payload. If I compare that to what console generated, you will see that they are not the same. So we're going to go ahead and clear and we're going to create a base64 encoded payload. Why did that end up? Probably because I was just not paying attention to my copy pastes. Okay, there's my base64 payload and cue it. Now, if I go back to putty and I repeat my command at plus send b equals 11.22. Uh, I think console just sent me a blank downlink. So I'm going to repeat that again. We'll call that a feature uh, of the console. The fact that I had queued up messages um, afterwards, then cleared the queue, didn't didn't result in what I wanted. So we'll go ahead and queue that up. There's my new uh, downlink queue and at. Send B eleven twenty two, and there is my received data two fifty eight. I have now successfully changed my reporting interval to ten minute. Trust me, it works. I I don't want to sit here for ten minutes and talk to you while we're waiting for it to prove that fact. Um, so the base64.us site is the site to use. You may come across some of these others like base64encode.net or base64encode.org or any other base64 encoder. They will not work. There isn't the option to maintain the hex uh, formatting on that payload. So. I'll quickly do this one more time because I want to put that back uh, 04B0 and 04B0. Make sure I don't have too many zeros in here. Nope. And encode. There's my 64 base 64 payload. Come back over to console. Uh, I'll just refresh that. Oh, because I'm waiting for confirmation. Right. Clear, refresh. Oh, wow. My copy paste has failed me yet again. A64. I'm not going to wait for a confirmation response this time. Cue that up. One last time, go into PuTTY. The other way you can do this is actually just pressing and holding that ACT button for two seconds to force an uplink. Um, I just like to make sure I'm showing you guys different ways of doing this. Uh, this was new to me last night. I hadn't uh, seen or done this in the past, and I thought, well, that makes everything easier. It's all on the keyboard. So, and I've timed out. Yeah, 
Yeah. Depending on your terminal program, sometimes backspace doesn't do backspace. So we'll do this one more time. I'll get it right this time, I promise. And there we are. Transmitting, receiving. Surprised that's still sitting there. I didn't want 258. You know what? I'm going to do this one more time just because I'm not 100% confident that that actually reported properly. So, uh, AT. <coughs> yeah, done it again. A T plus send B equals eleven twenty-two. Transmit receive timeout receive timeout. This doesn't make for a great tutorial when it stops doing what it's supposed to do, but I will blame that on me, not on the codes and the commands. Blame it on the fact that while recording this at the same time, my machine tends to get a little slow, sluggish. Uh, I tend to get a little slow, sl sluggish. So um, we'll just jump in here one more time, make sure everything looks good, because I don't believe... Yeah, see, I got an empty payload that time. And I still have a downlink queued. Uplink, downlinked, good. Uh, use the ACT button for those that missed that. And look at that, there's my 4B. Did exactly what I wanted it to do. So. Honestly, as long as you're not trying to bounce back and forth and do multiple commands sequentially, you should have no problem with this. Uh, I've watched it done last night, done it again this morning, doing it again now to, to show you guys. Um, so that's how that works. I apologize for the misinformation previously. Uh, I will be sure to include the links in the comments. Um, other than that, if you have any other questions or concerns, feel free to reach out to me on Discord, hacking this and that. Um, be happy to help. And uh, if necessary, go to the engineering teams and figure out what's going on uh, and try to help solve your problem. So I uh, hope this has been helpful. Um, again, have an awesome day, and I'll see you on the Discords.